I got up this morning to grab something out of the refrigerator and I noticed that it wasn't cold. So I checked the freezer. Things are still frozen in the freezer, but the refrigerator side is not cooling properly. The way a refrigerator freezer works is things are cooled on the freezer side and then that cool from the freezer side is blown over into the refrigerator side. I checked the vent on the refrigerator side, which is here, while the unit's running, and I feel absolutely no air movement coming from the freezer side. I checked on the freezer side, nothing's frozen up in here, no blockage. So we're going to take the freezer apart and see what the problem is. Let's get started. First thing I need to do is pull the refrigerator out. The next thing I'm going to do is unplug it. The back top of this freezer, there's a little hole here. And that hole is what takes the cool air from the freezer into the refrigerator to cool the refrigerator. So I'm going to take a rag or a towel and just put it in there to try to keep things in the refrigerator cool while I'm doing this. Next, I need to empty the contents out of the freezer. Next, I'm going to pull the shelves out of the freezer. And they just snap out and pull out. And pull the light cover off. It just pops up, pulls out. And to check this, I need to pull this panel right here off. So I need to take these guides for that bottom shelf off and pull the light bulb out. For these bottom tracks, one on each side, it's just a Phillips screwdriver. With the tracks out, all we need to do is take these two screws out and we'll release this ground wire, it just pops up, and we can pull the back panel off. And then we can slide the back panel out. I keep the right side in and pull the left side out. Otherwise, you'll hit the clips for the shelf and it slides right out. And oh boy, there's our problem. You can see the coil is completely frozen up, which tells me I either have a bad thermostat or a bad heater element. We'll check the heater element first. And that's this piece right down there. Comes out with two Phillips screws on this refrigerator. And there's our heat element. There's two wire leads going to that heat element. Just unplug them and the heat element comes out. Depending on how old you are, back in the day you used to have to defrost your freezer frequently. Well then they came out with these heat elements so that you didn't have to do that anymore. Now we'll go ahead and test the heat element. You want to set your ohm meter to the lowest number. I've got mine at 20 thousandths, but you can also set it to the sound alarm. And we should get a reading between 0 and 50 ohms for there to be continuity in there. Go ahead and turn it on, and we'll just test the ohm meter. It's good. Now we'll go ahead and touch the heat element. And all this heat element is, is two contacts with a coil wire in between, like a fuse. If the coil wire breaks, there's no continuity, it's not working. Touch one lead and the other. We've got nothing. 
That means this heat element is bad and I need to replace it. And that is the problem with the refrigerator freezing up. Now your refrigerator will work without the heat element. It's just going to freeze up. The coils will freeze up like you see here. So if I don't open the doors a lot, I can put this back together and maybe get a week out of this before it freezes up again. That gives me time to get a new part and then put it in and I won't lose the food that I have. So what I'm going to do to speed up the process and get the stuff back in the freezer, I'm going to take a blow dryer and use the hot air to melt that ice, put it back together, and order my part. Now you might ask, why does the heat element go bad? Well, about three weeks ago, I had company over, and I was outside working, and I came in after they had left, and it had been at least four hours, and I noticed the freezer door was left open about that much. What that does is it lets the moist, humid air from the outside in, causes the freezer to frost up, which causes the heat element to be on constantly, and it causes it to burn out. Let's get this defrosted and the food back in the freezer. There's a fan in behind up at the top of the coils and it pulls the cool air up through and over into your refrigerator. When that freezes up rock solid, the air can't move and it can't cool. Now I'm going to do just the reverse of what I did in taking it apart, except I don't have the heat element and I'll have to take it back apart and put that in when I get it. But for now, It'll keep my food, and if I don't open the doors a lot, it should last me about a week. You want to be careful not to bend those fins on the coil. If you bend them, it becomes less efficient, just like the radiator on a car. Don't forget to pull the rag out. And we're cooling again. The new part has arrived. It's been about four to five days. Here's what we got. That element in there is what you do not want to touch. It'll make it go bad. The oil from your skin makes it burn out real quick. And we will go ahead and test the new one just to make sure it's good. Very good. Got a good reading. Good resistance. We'll go ahead and install it. If your heat element is okay, but you have a problem, it could be your thermostat, and I'll show you where that is. And that's very, very easy to change out. It just clips on to the coil there, and it's that round piece right there. Now we'll put the heat element in, and it's held in by two Phillips screws. Real simple. With that installed, we just reassemble everything. Sweet sound. Here's a little bonus tip for you. Take Vaseline, put a little bit on your finger, and hit the four corners of the seal. 
do that every four to six months and it keeps your seals from tearing. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.